Hi everyone and a very warm welcome to the channel. So what I wanted to do today was take a look at the init B page or the init fuel prediction page as you might know it by. So what I've done, I've gone into the init A page, entered our flight details for our flight from Heathrow over to Newark. To the flight plan page, I've entered every I've made sure that I've got the departing runway and the SID, which is Compton 3 Golf SID. Do make sure as well that you've not got any, any discontinuities in your flight plan. So this this is now complete all the way over the Atlantic until we get to our final waypoint there of Taffy Cajon, etc. You're probably familiar with those waypoints um, as they bridge um, quite a few stars into Newark. Back to the init uh, B page. So why are we doing this? So what I normally do is cross check this with the fuel details and the trip time from Simbrief. Today what I'm going to do is use it to actually estimate how much fuel we need to load. So I flew this flight in a 747-400 the other day. Um, we took about 78 tonnes there, this is probably a bit leaner. Um, but what we're going to do is just enter a block fuel amount and you'll see then it will start to populate these values here. As a tip, anything in blue you can change, anything in green you cannot change because they're computed values. So you can see that we've gone in and just entered our zero fuel weight, that's in a slightly bigger font. I'm not too worried about the zero fuel weight center of gravity for this exercise. So what was I saying then about things in blue, so let's say if we wanted a different taxi um, fuel amount than, uh, than the default, so if we thought it was going to be a longer taxi, enter that and you can just see the font size changes maybe a shorter taxi, 0.5, etc. So we'll just restore that value. Same with the route reserve amount. We're just going to choose the standard one there of 5%. Uh, we might want 7% for example. we we'll just enter it in that format. I'll just go back to the 5% for our example today. So what you do, just start off with a, a figure um, basically pluck one out of thin air. So here we're going to go, let's go with about 67 tonnes. That is of course based on what we know about the, the burn of the um, of the jumbo. That's not too bad, just let it settle there. So the, the extra time here, I tend to go for around about zero. Don't um, don't leave that as a, as a negative, so what I mean there. If you see that value as negative it means that when it subtracts all of these figures here 1.2, 51, 2.6, 4.8 and 5 from the block fuel it's getting a, a negative value there so that's not what you want because what you're saying is that you're not actually um, fulfilling one of these values one or all of those values so let's go back to 67 and if we now subtract all of those values down to the final line from 67 we've got 1.2 extra tons to to play with so that might be well that that's certainly up to um, the captain's discretion they might decide to uh, have a bit more extra fuel upon their destination we could change those values if we wanted so our alternate is Boston uh, if I thought it might take six tons to get there I would just type that in there and now the extras bang on zero there so um, you can see it's just borrowed it from from that line there so before we go ahead and just uh, say to our fuel uh, handlers load 67 tons let's uh, think about if that value though is sensible as well you know that I always like to cross-reference a few items make sure that what we're getting um, will be enough fuel in this case to get us safely over to um, to Newark without having to swim the final few hundred miles. Six hours 47, so maybe here we're missing something from the overall calculation. Um, what could that be? So if you're thinking the wind factor, you're spot on. Let's go over here to the data page and I'm just going to put this, I've not loaded any winds in there so at the moment that's why it's saying 6 hours 47 that's assuming that we're going to take off we're not going to get a headwind or a tailwind 
we'll go to the next phase here for the cruise section of this and into Fokler I'm just going to enter the average wind component which is 257 at 47 so what that's saying to us is we've got a slight headwind so we're we'll probably be flying um, you know in a northerly direction um, originally so we're pretty much flying into the into the opposite direction of the winds so let's go ahead and enter that and what this will do is it will just propagate that for the entire flight that's while we're on the ground so let's just go in there 257 at 47 you see that instantly goes back to, to negative uh, because what it's done now is it's saying that the trip time is 7 hours 23 minutes that's about what we did it the other day in the jumbo in but I'm not sure what the uh, sort of cruise speed of the jumbo compared to the uh, 34600 is um, so let's go back to our flight plan page you can see the same thing on there so let's just enter an amount higher so maybe if we just go with seven uh, 71 tons and that's probably about right um, that's saying to us now we'd just end up with 0 0.2 extra but what we'll be landing with or planning with landing with is certainly the alternate and the final so that's based on five so this figure here your estimated fuel on board on arrival is based on adding up your uh, 0.2 your 5 so that sums up to 10 and that gives us 12.8 uh, 12.8 tons so we can allow the one 100 kilos there for rounding I'm sure we can it tends to be um, tend to find um, sometimes I do burn a little bit more than uh, than sim brief so that's why I often use this as well so I'll sometimes just come in cross especially if it's going to be a fairly long long range flight um, I'll just cross reference the time and also the the trip fuel with what sim brief is telling me hope that's been useful to you I'll do another one of these showing you um, perhaps the 321 the 319 320 um, something like that because you can use that on the entire range of Airbuses where you've got the init fuel prediction page so certainly all the ones that, that you see on this channel um, I'm often doing that certainly to cross reference it another use if you say doing a, a short hop maybe a few hundred miles you've just keyed in a, a SID and a star don't bother with sim brief uh, you can use sim brief if you want to of course you can but I tend not to um, fire up sim brief in that case I'll just enter a SID star come in here guess the fuel do a few sort of iterations of the block fuel until I've got something down here that's just got a slight extra time okay before we go uh, another question I was asked once let's see if you know the answer to this is why don't you just fill these planes up just fill it up with as much fuel as what uh, as what it will take and if you recall our flight from Madrid over to Los Angeles we think we loaded around 135 tons of fuel um, to go around about 13 and a half hours um, so yeah why wouldn't we do that well one of the reasons and this is only one of the reasons drop the rest in the comments but let's say if we took 135 here what's it going to do to this trip fuel figure here it's gone up from 56.3 up to 68.4 so in order to carry that extra fuel we're burning extra fuel so it's a it's a balancing act just carrying what you need not being too stingy thinking about your alternates thinking about the destination when you get there is it going to be busy do you need a bit more fuel for holding etc as I say let's explore the other reasons drop those in the comments there's many more reasons why you don't want to just fill her up hope you've enjoyed that any other questions drop them in the comments conscious that I've not been uploading um, as many videos of late to the channel but if there's any particular route that you'd like me to cover and aircraft type do drop that as well in the comments uh, take care and I'll see you all soon thanks bye bye